So this is the Oracle database API for MongoDB, where you can run MongoDB workload uh, application workloads with little to no change uh, directly through API to the Oracle Atomos JSON database and the Oracle Atomos transaction processing database, which provides great uh, JSON SQL interoperability as well. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is provision your Atomos database. So just give it a name. These are just out of random out of the box names. You can feel free to make them the same or different up to you. Here are your flavors of Atomos database. It's uh, works with transaction processing and JSON. We'll go JSON for now. Stick with all the defaults for the OCPU storage and scaling. Remember your password because you're going to be entering this in the terminal quite a bit. And this is very important for the network access. For it to work, you must do secure access from allowed IPs and VCNs only. Uh, for best security protocol, uh, for least privilege, you just want to do your public IP of your local machine. But for your demo purposes, I'll do a CIDR block with the open set, which puts all IPs into the whitelist. Do license included and create a Thomas database. It'll take a couple minutes and you'll see the icon here turn from orange to green. And I've already went ahead and provisioned it so we don't have to wait. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to go to your database actions menu. And here's where your database uh, management, where managing users, roles, etc. cetera. Uh, JSON, here is where uh, you'll be able to interact with your JSON uh, documents and collections from your directly uh, integrated in real time with your MongoDB application or MongoDB Atlas. And here's the SQL, which um, you can do everything in JSON if you want, except it is recommended that you do user management, um, aggregation pipelines, and and querying uh, through the through the the SQL uh, portion. But there's great JSON SQL interoperability, and I will demonstrate that. And now that you we've provisioned our Thomas database, uh, AJD to be specific, and we've gone through a quick tour of what we need for the database actions menu. Let's get started in connecting uh, MongoDB to your local machine. So the first thing you want to do is if you don't have for a Mac, if you don't have already, you're going to want to install Homebrew, which is a package manager for all uh, packages out of the box um, for every you know application that the Apple Store doesn't have. So you're going to copy this to your uh, this command curl command to your clipboard and I will open up a terminal window and we're just gonna copy it run it it's gonna ask for your password the one what that you use to sign in your computer And it usually takes a lot longer, but I've already done it, so it didn't take that long. So we're just going to do brew update to make sure homebrew is completely updated. 
should take long. Already up to date. Brew V for V stands for Brubose, so we get some details of our homebrew version and our last commits to the GitHub repository. And now we're going to install MongoDB. So we're going to do the brew install MongoDB hyphen community. Let's get the community version. I'm not trying to do anything fancy here. Oh, and let's make this bigger so we can see much better. See, it, the, it, you can see it already registers that it's installed because it's doing a reinstall. So now, uh, you're gonna. I'm not gonna recreate these, but sudo to get our root, and then we're gonna make the directory, and then for Mac for Catalina on, and since I have Big Sur, which is a, um, it came after Catalina, then we're gonna be privy to this, where we have to create the directory in this specific folder for security purposes, in this specific directory. going to ask us for our password. I'm going to give it to him. Great. No errors. That means no errors. Now, what you're going to do to put the proper privileges on it, sudo chone dash r. And these are the ones right next to the back indents, right next to the one uh, on your keyboard. Next, we're going to do start the daemon. DB path. Same directory. Know the drill by now. Now we can see that MongoDB is up and running, and here's the initialization JavaScript here, and with the sample namespaces. And there's a uh, a quick little tip here. We can do alias to to do a shortcut, so we don't have to type all that out in the future. And we can set. So we're gonna say mongod is our alias. That way, it is equivalent to everything I typed in in the last command uh, up here. That way, we can just type in mongod going forward. Um, to easily start start up MongoDB, sudo mongod db path, same directory. Oh, Volumes. Now let's type in Mongod. And you can see that the shortcut is applied. So now we are going to run this command right here because we're going to go with the newer port. Uh, 
So before I do this, I just want to show you. Go here. And we can go to our related services, Oracle Database API for MongoDB. And these are the strings that you want to copy down. If uh, it's a newer driver, you're going to use point port 27017. If it's older, then point, uh, port 27016 will work. And you're going to want to copy these strings with the caveat of replacing user with admin because it's the reserved name for Atomos database and the password you specified, and then as well as changing this part right here to admin as well. And uh, same, same thing for if you choose to go with the older version. So you're going to want to run this command right here. Clear. Clean it up. It's kind of messy. And you can see I've already done that with TLS, allow invalid certifications, and the mongosh command. And you see where it's, we have successfully connected. Um, and now let's just run a create some sample tables so we can view them in our autonomous database and you can see how that's integrated in real time. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create our collection with just a table. And you can see it already exists because we did it in an alternate database. Now let's go back to our database. Let's go to JSON. and we connected it <coughs> to this database here. Any second now. Go to our JSON uh, development window. And you can see that EMP table that we created uh, in the terminal of our local machine with Mongosh running is now in our autonomous database. Um, so let's just get, run through some sample commands and get you familiar with the environment. So we can click on the table, do index, uh, create an index. We're going to hit this plus sign, give our new index a name, for example, like salary score IDX. Do an asterisk to display the known properties. Select salary. Uh, you can you can see this uh, pop up here. To select more than one property, click on composite index checkbox above. Ch um, we're only going to do one, so we're not doing that. Uh, we you can see I've already done that. <laughs> so you can see that I've already created the index here. 
and you can see the information in JavaScript uh, in human, obviously, which is already in human readable format. Um, so let's go, you've seen the JSON environment, now let's go to the SQL environment and see how that integrates with our JSON. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, see our JSON tables. Alright, I'll just type it in. Select JSON underscore serialize. You can see the AI auto fills it. Data from EMP semicondolon. Run. And now you can see our. Um, our JSON data. Uh, of our query result. Now let's show you, uh, you can see that each of the three JSON documents is stored in a separate row of the EMP table. Um, but I'll show you how to get the JSON out of the table using SQL as well as Mongosh uh, for this workshop. Um, if we want to do SQL fields inside this JSON, that's pretty easy as well. We're going to use the, the, the dot notation to fetch a value from the JSON data column. Um, only thing that, only caveat is that we must use a table alias uh, E in this next example to use the dot notation to perform the operation to get the JSON out of the table. Now we hit run. And you can see our data is stored uh, in a relational database format like it would be if it was in a relational data and table columns. Um, you can see we can do anything with these MongoDB applications, anything with this data that we could with normal columns. Um, so let's, let's uh, take it up a notch and garner some insight from this data. Let's say we want to get the average salary by job from our collection. You can see it uh, pulls the results from the data. And we've only scratched the surface of our SQL JSON capabilities here. But my intention was just simply to show you that you can work seamlessly with MongoDB tools, Oracle JSON tools, and SQL JSON on the same data. Um, yeah, I look forward to doing more uh, MongoDB videos in the future.